<laughs> the funny thing is, um, it might be TMI, but I like already did check my bra, but it was on the side uh, of my. Uh, there's a yeah. lot of a lot of compartments in those. Would it like yeah. generally in the middle? Yeah, usually. All right. Well, I'm just glad we found it because yeah. I was going crazy. Like it's there's only so many places it could be. But you know, just to make it clear, we didn't find it. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, when I was flying back from Toronto, I overheard this conversation of a uh, woman lost her plane ticket. Yeah. And the person she was flying with was really angry. Like, you lost it again? Did you check your bra? Yeah. <laughs> and the other person was like, what's the first place I checked? <laughs> uh, Kat Tang is with us. Kat Tang. First Hello. woman. On our podcast, yeah. Yeah. and we're talking bras. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it the first yeah. person yes. of color as well? Uh, let me think. No. Let me think. No, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. For women kind, you got one. I am right? here. <laughs> It's Beer Friday, Beer Friday A group of animators getting together we'll Swap stories and see who's is better And of course, drink some beer Yeah, Beer Friday is finally here Crab, can you quickly sort of say like what you worked on? Yeah, uh, currently I'm working on My Little Pony um, I've worked on... Such acclaimed shows as Endangered Species, Littlest Pet <laughs> Shop, uh, Transformers Rescue Bots, and uh, oh, Chuck's Choice, and Super Noobs. Wow. So awesome. a lot of kids' yeah. television. Cool. Only yeah. one of those shows matters. We'll find <laughs> yeah. out later in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got the brony vote. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Creative Converse's Cat uh, started on Ed, Ed, and Eddie way back in the 90s. At AKA, right? Yeah. AKA Cartoon. Um, when did you start in the industry? Like mid 90s? 1996. Okay. 1996. Mm. I was an, animating for Bardell. Nice. On a CD-ROM called Great Galaxy Cook-Off. Yeah. I, I got hired right out of school, which was amazing. And then the industry just dropped out completely mm. in, in 97. Was it you? Why is it? <laughs> well, let, let's, just, let's just roll back a minute here. So, so to paint a picture for what the industry was like. because I terrible. Because I started uh, after that, uh, six or seven years after that. Mm. Um, but like late 90s, so everything's on paper. Yeah, there was still on paper. The little flash boom hadn't happened yet. Disney uh, Canada mm-hmm. was set up in Vancouver. Right. Uh, they were animating uh, straight to DVD stuff, like right. the Beauty and the Beast stuff. And, uh, like um, all the sequels, like the... Yeah. 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 Little Mermaid so 3 and all that. Everything was on paper. Right. Um, flash was still kind of on the horizon. I think it was around, but <clears throat> being used... What it's supposed to be used for? Yeah, that was when like flash shows were just bad internet flash yes. things, which is what it's. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, animation was the hand drawn days. It was pretty cyclical, so it would it would be really busy and then it'd be really dead. Mm. And I think around that time in '97, um, I think International Rocket Ship was animating The Far Side. Um, but beside that, there really wasn't a lot happening in town. I think, really? I think Bardell was still getting uh, or starting to get their feature right. stuff. Uh, they were all hand So Bardell was one of the, the big studios in town at the time, maybe? Yeah. yeah. And then who, who else was like, a, was AKA, did they exist yet? AKA existed because Danny had done uh, Brothers Grunt. Right. Um, and he was getting Ed, Ed and Eddie mm-hmm. off the ground at that time. Okay. So, yeah, anyway, the, the, uh, the industry died. Ed, Ed, and Eddie pretty much saved me because I was down to my last rent check. I was, right. I was going through the phone book looking at uh, how much a U-Haul yeah. trailer is going to cost to go back to Nova Scotia because I thought, this is it. Oh, it's man, it was like, like, yeah. Yeah, so that show uh, 
kickstarted my career. And, and then while you were in the phone book, you went, AKA, that was the first one in the no. phone book. <laughs> so you called them up and they went, yeah, we'll hire you. No, I yeah. got a, I got a reference from one of my instructors from right. film school because cool. Danny's office at the time was up, up above his. Right, right, right. So he secured me an interview and, uh, yeah, I managed to find my way in without knowing anything. I feel like everyone that I've met who worked at AKA is like, Still working and doing strong, you know. Like yeah. there was something about yeah. that mm-hmm. studio, yeah. and like I really never worked there, but like, like ninjas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but they all also have like horror stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. <laughs> we do. We, yeah. we do. It, it's, it's pretty easy to tell a horror story, but at, at right. the same time, there's a reason why. But there was some all kind these of, guys are directing or they're in features now because yeah. uh, there was some kind of boot camp quality or or something. I don't know, like. It was it was literally boots camp. Boots, boots camp. camp. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, I I used to. <laughs> How can I put this without you guys having to edit it? Uh, uh, we'll be editing all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it was Jay Falconer that said, like, "Danny will give you enough rope to hang yourself with." Yeah, every, every right. time. And, and and it was absolutely true. Like we. Uh, we struggled on that show because none of us knew what we were doing. We all bonded together because yeah. we all helped each other. Yeah. Right? Um, it, it was an environment I haven't seen since. I've tried to recreate it. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what? Endangered Species was pretty close to... It wasn't the same experience, but in terms of, of everybody bonding on a mm-hmm. show, uh, it was close to that hmm. for sure. But... Um, which was yeah. where I got my storyboarding start okay. with Boots. Right. Oh, on Endangered? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought you worked before that. Gig. I, wow. I was in, I'd done like a contract or two in the industry, but oh. that was my first storyboarding job. Were you, so you're right out of school, kind of? Um, no, no. I, when I graduated from school, there wasn't a lot of work going on. Mm. It was like during the, one of the droughts. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then I just went into builds. Ah. And was hoping to get into boards from there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you did. And then I did. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. It's no. the secret. Yeah. <laughs> and a, a cat used to sit outside, directly outside my office when I was directing uh, Packages from Planet X. Right. And yeah, I, I knew you were on builds. And then when I moved over to Nerdcore for Endangered, they gave me a, a crew list. So, you know, you, you know you've got Cat Tang. I was like, I had no idea that Cat wanted to do mm-hmm. boards or, right. or could do boards. And, Mm. I mostly remember you as like the grumpy guy who would slam his office door yeah. shut and would get subway like at least a couple times a week. Yeah. <laughs> this seems accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so the beer we're drinking today, guys, is Main Street Brewery. Uh, cool. What what uh, what kind me. of beer are we looking at here, Johnson? Uh, yeah. It smells like something. Oh, it smells like a saison or like a wheat beer. Yeah. Yeah, it's Whoa. a number seven saison. Wow! Well done, which Kat. is different. Wow! Yeah, I was gonna say that. It's uh, what's crazy though about this one? The IBU is fifteen, so that means the hop level is super right. low, which Ooh. I like. Not I don't like beer. hoppy beer. Uh, but the alcohol level is way up. Whoa! What do we look? What are we Six percent, baby. Whoa. Six? Really? Yeah. Yeah, this tastes good. It's pretty nice. It's a good um, summer one. One thing I find mm-hmm. with saison sometimes is that. If they have too much flavor, they can taste like a barnyard. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Yeah. 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 You're, just, you're, you're, you're drinking a yeah. uh, goat. Yeah, yeah. You, don't want that horse, <laughs> you don't want that horse sweat in there. <laughs> <laughs> cool thing about Main Street Brewing, uh, Scott Mosier, I believe, is part owner, oh, if not yeah. the owner, right. who is um, right. uh, Kevin Smith's producer mm-hmm. on uh, Clerks and all that. Yeah. Yep. He was. He grew up in Port Coquitlam, I believe. My favorite thing is not this beer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there we go. This is good. We need. We need some. Uh, we need some honest yeah. feedback. I find beer. saisons don't it appeal feels, to a lot of people. It tastes flat to me for some reason. You know, it's okay. Yeah. Put that on the label. Do you like? Do you like hoppy beer? Because I got another one. Yeah, not not a great choice. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Johnson. <laughs> yeah, it fucked up again. <laughs> Story time. So I wanted to get into boards a lot, and uh, so I started. We're not, we're not talking about like uh, boards, like wood boards. Right? Waterboarding. Yeah. <laughs> Storyboarding, <laughs> Rich. What? Oh, storyboarding. <laughs> yes. Right. Like the drawing mm. of the pictures. 
You know, Rich, the yeah. stuff that you ignore as a director. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to get into those. And then, um, but I was having a hard time breaking in at the time. And I was doing my first board revising gig. And it ended up being the most amazing experience I could right. have for learning. Like me and the other board revisionist, we were able to like do revs and then like cut them in with the editor. Yeah. See the timing and right. like it. Uh, direct him for like how we thought the timing should go, and then so you, got, you got to sit in on the cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then later we'd have the board supervisors come in, and they would make changes for what they thought was needed, and we would get to see that, which was really helpful. Yeah. And totally. then, and then yeah. later the extra revision after that, and uh, it ended up being like the most amazing board experience you could have. An actual learning experience. Exactly. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember when I when I came on board because I, I talked to the director. Monkey was the director. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know, like, I, I don't want to step on anyone's toes here. I, I don't know how much you need from me. I, I don't want to rock the boat here. And I clearly remember Monkey saying, rock the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the boat's on the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so That's we'll figure I... out what we can do. And, yeah. and like I said, like way earlier in the podcast, like I, I knew Kat as a, a builder or right. posing with building, I guess. Mm-hmm. Not as a, as a board artist. So it was like, you know, I'm... I, <laughs> kind of lazy i i want other people to do my work for me so i was like what what can you do and i think at that point no one really knew what cat could do so i i had her and the other revisionist like just thumbnail thumbnail me a sequence and let's see what you can do yeah and once i saw the thumbnail i was like you're you're being wasted here like you should be doing more boarding Mm -hmm. uh, as well as the revision so you know which is always where you want it to yeah, be anyway, right? For sure. Yeah. But I felt like, I guess, where I was, I had no guidance. Like, even my board supervisor before, like, he was so bogged down with work. Yeah, yeah. He himself said, like, I have no time for you, and I wish I had more time for you. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, not ideal, but then as soon as we got the people that we needed, it was, it was a perfect learning experience. Yeah. yeah. I got offered my first directing job... Um, in, I think it was 2000, on Mr. Hell Show, which was for uh, Comedy Network and, and BBC. Was that Bardell? Uh, Sexton. Okay. Oh, which, sex, I've heard about that. Yeah, story. yeah. There are many stories about <laughs> Sexton. It was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, Jay, Jay Falconer was uh, like, creative producer on the show and and mm. he had been my storyboard supervisor on uh, Ed, Ed and Eddie season two and when he found out I was leaving Ed and Eddie um, he offered me this job I thought I was coming in the storyboard and then he said no you I want the storyboard artist to continue through as a director of the episode and my first impression was like no fucking way I'm not doing this because I had been out of school for, you know, I finished in 96, end of 96, so yeah. like four years I'm doing yeah. the math going, no one's going to respect me as a director. I shouldn't, yeah. be, shouldn't be doing it. Right. And Jay, who I would consider as one of my mentors, was, um, was very good at saying, like, nobody's going to let you fail at this. You've got, you've got tons of support around you. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Uh, and I did it, and it turned out to be a great experience. And it was right. two, two episodes of of the series. You know, I didn't direct again until Kid vs. Cat, how, uh, you know, six years later, or eight right. years later. Hmm. Um, and even with Kid vs. Cat, I was completely overwhelmed by that that experience and, and wasn't wasn't really ready for it and that's when uh well that wasn't just directing that was like you were show doing creating everything and, show, it, yeah and a shitload yeah. of other stuff right? yeah it design was, everything it was uh it was an eye opener to the like the industry as a as a business right that first season of of kid vs cat was, was miserable for why, me why was it miserable it was, it was i i had a uh i had a resignation letter written 
uh, and it was on my computer at home and it was on my computer at work. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was ready to go. And <laughs> there was a point we, I think we delivered, we delivered the, um, we delivered the first animated episode to the broadcaster uh-huh. and it was, it became pretty clear that the broadcaster didn't like what we sent. Mm. Mm. And when that happens, alarm bells are going all over mm. the studio, right? Because I mean, this, this was, is a lot of money that you're talking about. You want to yeah. make sure the broadcaster is happy. And this was your promo? No, this was the pilot. First episode. The pilot, sorry. Okay. The promo sold the show. Okay. The, the short that I did sold the show. but So the pilot episode. Weird. Uh, I mean, it... it when I look back on it, it's not the funniest episode. It doesn't really represent the series as a whole, but um, it might have missed the mark a little bit. But not knowing the business is, and as a first time creator, I was like, "Oh God, they just they <laughs> they hate this show." It was getting big ratings in the states. Yeah. Um, it got great ratings on YTV. Like it was, in the end, it was a, it was a good international show. Yeah. But. Not understanding the business, um, the first season was miserable for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, after that first episode was delivered, I I called my wife and said, "I'm sending the letter. I'm sending <laughs> it today." I can't believe you wrote the letter. And she uh, she <laughs> talked me out of it. It's like I don't. I don't. You went like you went through all of that effort and created the show. Yeah. yeah. Broke through the glass ceiling of creating a show in the company that you're already working in. Yeah. Um, proved to all of them that you you're you're capable, mm-hmm. and you still. Wrote I still wrote a letter <laughs> saying I'm I'm out of here. I'm out. <laughs> Most people would be like. I'm a million dollars. Yeah. I'm a million dollars. <laughs> I can also see like this is your baby, and they're going like, yeah. "Hey, we think this baby is ugly as shit." This baby is ugly as shit. That's exactly what it. That's exactly what it is. And you go, "Oh my god, I produced yeah. an ugly like, baby." Wait a minute. Yeah. No one, no one likes what I produce, and then wow. you start to realize like how when a network gets involved, when, when uh, a studio gets involved, everybody's got their point of view of what yeah. the show should be. And you need to find a way to uh, put all of that together mm. and still maintain what you liked about the show. To, to think that I could get away with, this is a show I pitched and this is a show that's going to end up on the air, Yeah, there are only a few people that can get away with that. I think Danny Antonucci got away with it, I think, with mm-hmm. Ed, Ed and Eddie. I, I'm not Danny Antonucci. <laughs> I'm not going to get away with it. So it became something different. Hmm. But once I acknowledged what it was and was like, okay, I can, I can work with this and I can make this as, as funny as I can, um, it was fine with that. <laughs> yeah, but we're off to the races. It was like, okay. I mean, during that period, yeah. I, I, I should say, like, Josh Meffin was my co-director, mm-hmm. and Josh Meffin was someone that I fully acknowledge would, uh, I always say to him, like, the first season of Kid vs. Cat was just me splashing in a pool, <laughs> 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 trying to, to keep above the surface, and Josh, every so often, will just reach in, pull me up, you're mm-hmm. alright, mm-hmm. and then let me go again and, and right, right. figure stuff out, so cool. you know, yeah. he was, you know, what if I gave anything to Cat, uh, Josh gave that to me in spades during mm. Kid vs. Cat. Cool, man. Snack time! Welcome to Snack Time Action News. We're here in the heart of the Bouchard kitchen where Brent Bouchard is attempting to create Kentucky Fried Chicken based on a recipe he found on the interwebs. And we're here with Rob Boutlier and Cat Tang. How are you guys feeling? I'm a little afraid for my life. <laughs> I'm going to be the cynical one here. I'm going to call bullshit on this. It's not going to taste anything like KFC. Better be better than the beer. Well, folks, you can just tell it really is an exciting and riveting uh, moment in history in the Bouchard kitchen here. Let's go to the center of the action with uh, Brent Bouchard, uh, where the boiling of the oil is happening. Boiling like a volcano. You could really just throw someone in there and make them disappear. Uh, Brent, could you tell the listeners uh, what's going on in your head right now uh, in this moment, in this very moment? My wife burned her old apartment down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> trying to deep fry fries one time. This is, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm a little nervous. Here, you take the mic. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand back here a little bit. I got a handful of batter and a kitchen full of fryer here. We're gonna die. How did the KFC thing start for you? Because like you're known for KFC, 
loving KFC, and it's kind of a joke. Uh, I, it's not a joke. Okay. It's serious business. I have had KFC for my birthday, probably for f- 40 years. Since you were a kid, right? I'm 46. Okay. So I'm guessing around six years old <laughs> is the proper time to get KFC for your birthday. But where we lived was like 30 minutes outside the city. So it was a, it was a car drive to get KFC. It was an effort. It was a treat to have it. And for me, KFC is like, it's that memory where it's like, it was a special thing to have on your birthday. Mm-hmm. And when I uh, became an adult <laughs> uh, and a free thinking person, I continued the tradition every year. So I, I have it at least once a year, most likely like three to five times a year. That's pretty and cool. I'm still alive. You're a man of a tradition. I'm 46, and I'm still yeah. alive. Until we try this. <laughs> <laughs> Dig in, guys. I'm going to yeah, call bullshit, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, you know, Off the get-go, I'm going to say it looks a little dark. Uh, well, yeah, you know. Uh, from, from the smells deep good. frying is what you're saying. Yeah, from the deep yeah. frying. Mm, smells really nice. Um, it is... Um, yeah, as I'm eating this, I realize not even close. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. Even, but the not chicken even is close. the chicken is cooked. Oh, it's a great but fried I love, chicken. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. Like it tastes fine. Beautiful. I love, I love the effort. I really wanted this to taste like KFC, though. That's the problem. Well, you right? failed. Yeah, I failed. <laughs> I failed horribly. I'm never going to do that again. At the risk of burning my house down, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> not really worth it. Favorite thing. So in the 80s, the, the Rubik's Cube, like, I didn't give a shit about it, right? Um, my uh, cousin who could program computers, like, he was like a genius guy. Uh, basically, I took a Rubik's Cube of his, and I, they used to have stickers on them, and I took them all off, and I kind yeah. of, like, yeah. put them on and did the thing, and I was like, yeah, I did it. And he was <laughs> like, ah, oh, fuck, and he grabbed it, and he then fixed it and then solved it. Like, he... Yeah, like he knew... Genuinely. Yeah, like he knew... At that point, you just have to throw it in the garbage. Um, <laughs> I, I never took the stickers off, but yeah. I would uh, put a screwdriver in between. They don't even have stickers on them anymore, but yeah. You yeah, can pop I take the screwdriver and just yeah. pop the square yeah. out oh, yeah. and reassemble yeah. it and say, look. And then I bought a book. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same thing. Like, uh, what happened so, was... I never genuinely solved the Rubik's Cube in my life. The, the way it went down was uh, last summer... I was at my, my parents' place in, in Ontario, where I'm from, and uh, my mom had a Rubik's Cube in, her, like a, in a box in the house. And I was like, what is this? And she's like, I don't know. I just bought it. And then I'm like, can I have this? So I, I was playing with it kind of that whole trip yeah. for a few weeks. And uh, me and whoever wanted to play with it, like my brother-in-laws and whatever, we were fucking around with it a little bit. And we'd get like one or two sides. And then I was getting like really frustrated with it, and I was going fucking crazy. <laughs> And then it wasn't until, yeah, like I went online later, <laughs> and, uh, which is essentially like finding that book, right? Yeah, the book. And uh, you realize that there's like uh, a few algorithms you need to know to do it. And then after that, you can solve it. And, and then I learned those. Mm-hmm. And then you, you kind of figure it out. And then, and then I've learned to solve the Rubik's Cube. So this is your favorite thing now because you just learned how to solve it? Because, <laughs> because I've been playing with it. Can you be on our show I've all been, the time? <laughs> I've been playing with it on and off for the last year. And I can't. I play with it like almost every day. And uh, that's it's just what like. She said. Yeah. <laughs> More like that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, so that, that was my favorite thing right now. Yeah. Okay, that's Good cool. Good stuff. Oh. All right. Uh, All right, Kat, what's your favorite thing? All right, so my favorite thing lately is an old thing. Not as old as Brent's, though, because so, his is really awesome. <laughs> Brent's, like, mega old. I am not, I'm not that old. Kat's here to tell us <laughs> yeah. we're old people. Brent, yeah, I'm fine with that. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I love video games. I've been playing video games since I was young. It's a video game. Shocker, right? Mm-hmm. So I love uh, these games from a company called Telltale Games. They do what's called like a point-and-click adventure yeah. game. Have you played oh, them? Oh, yeah. Nice. I love them. Yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. they're like story-driven point-and-click adventure games. Right. And it's all about the story. It's like you'll have like um, maybe an episode that's around like a two-and-a-half-hour 
adventure. And while you're playing through it, you know, at moments you, you have to make a decision. Like you're going to help this person or that person. And you choose sides. And by the end of the episode, you're on a different course of that story, right? Because of the choices you've made. And so they have all these different uh, franchises they've done. They usually pick, like, uh, franchises <laughs> or, like, properties yeah. that are usually from something else. So they, they have um, the Walking Dead series was exactly. the first one. I think it that was, was successful. It was the one successful one in, like, Wait, 2012. What? Yeah. Yeah, from the comics. You, you said this was old. Well, they've been doing it for 10 years. Yeah, it's been around for a while. It's not that old. Point and click adventure games is old. Like yeah, Sierra, yeah, totally. Yeah. Sierra games like, used to do pol- Police Quest, yeah. King's Quest, Space Quest. So I was really excited to see Telltale bring them back. So which like, one are you playing so right now? Okay, so we just finished Game of Thrones. They did their first season. There's another season coming, mm-hmm. and then Walking Dead. They're they've just started the third season on that, mm-hmm. and cool. I've only done the two seasons, but I'm really excited to start the third season. Um, Does it follow the? Uh, Storylines of the show, the comics. Okay, for Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. For Game oh, of I Thrones. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so they actually do the textures to look like a comic book. Hmm. And for right. Game of Thrones, they'll do it more painterly to almost look like a cool. like a painted image. Mm-hmm. So they'll do everything a little bit different. They did one season for Fables, which was another comic, and that was really like film noir. It's, uh, the Wolf Among Us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that was really cool because, like, each franchise they do, they'll do, like, a really different look for it. You get really hooked into the story and the art style, which is really fun. Like, they started off doing old comics like Bone from Jeff Smith, which I love. But 10 years ago, they started doing these kinds of games. But it didn't really take off until Walking Dead... Right. Until like 2012. I met one of the actors that uh, Did you? works for them. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, that's cool. I was at a film festival and he was like, what do you do? I was like, I'm an actor. And he had a film in the film festival. He's like, yeah, I'm a voice actor. On, uh, I was doing the, the Walking Dead. And I was like, video game? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> And, he, and then he ran away. Right. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. fair. And I saw him again. And actually, we're Facebook friends now. There you go. Uh, but he so won't hey. answer your messages. <laughs> yeah. There so. you go. Right. No. Yeah. He's, he's but, blocked you. Yeah. You know, months ago. But it's fine. One day, <laughs> <laughs> he liked something I posted twice. <laughs> oh, there you go. Did you so, get emotional when you played these games? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. I did too. Especially Walking Dead with season one. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of that. There's no way you can't get emotional. It won yeah. Game of the Year from I don't know, like. So 80. here's a here's a quick mm-hmm. question I about that. Cried. Like, if you're playing Game of Thrones or Walking Dead, can you steer the game to to end differently than mm-hmm. the yes, series? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome then. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty cool. That's why it's yeah. so interesting yeah. because it is a story driven game. It'd be like, what happens if this guy didn't do? And that? the addicting yeah. the addicting part of the game is. You have a time limit, yeah. like literally like two seconds to make a decision. You have oh, three yeah, decisions. Yeah, yeah. You could do, are you going to kill the kid, chop yeah. his arm off, yeah. or let the zombie eat him? Yeah. You're like, Give me chop his arm off. Yeah. You're like, oh, fuck, what did I just do? <laughs> and then they do it. You're like, yeah. oh, oh, my God. Those are called, um, they're called quick time <laughs> events. And this is what I play to go to bed because I'm like, there's so many tough decisions in life. I just want some more tough decisions. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that have consequences. Exactly, exactly. You have a few drinks while you're doing them and you're like, ah, I fucked everything up like usual. Tough no, to go to bed. It, yeah, it's funny. It is the, the best time to play it is like before you go to bed after yeah. you have a stressful day. Exactly. <laughs> it, I don't know why that is. It's really weird. <laughs> And so I guess the moral of the story is you have a lot of tough decisions in life, so why not have some more? There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Good share. Yeah. <laughs> nice. VIP theaters. Oh, oh yes. now I don't have know. Have you if... been to Fifth Avenue? Like, I just got to say this. That one's not VIP, No, but though. it's not a true VIP. No. Yeah. But there's no, no true... kids. There's no, no. there's no kids. But there's booze. Because I, I love movies. Uh... I used to go to like opening night, any movie that opened, I'd be there. 
And then I realized I, I don't like people. <laughs> and the, the, the crowds just got worse. They got noisier. Sometimes they there's people at these theaters. Too. <laughs> so I, I, I stopped going to movies uh, at night. I started to go to the matinees. Uh-huh. Like the first showing uh, of the day. The 2 p.m. No, like, like uh, 12. Oh, oh, Wait, but that's that. like oh, full shit. of babies and children. Uh, depending on the movie. But it's, it's generally... People that want to see the movie are not wandering in yeah. at that time. Right. They're mm. they're a bit more serious about it. So I started going to the matinees, and that became intolerable to me. In some <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way. It's like I can't even stand these people. So it's like I need <laughs> I need this 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 outlet where I can see a movie, and and no one's going to be there. And VIP theaters are the ticket because they're yeah. so. Fucking expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you right. have to really want to see the movie <laughs> yeah. to go there. Well, right. And no children are allowed ever. And no children. Right. You, yeah. it, like yeah. the seats are massive. They recline. You can like someone. You get a come, waiter. A waiter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get me a burger. I want a burger. You so get I can a watch pitcher my, of beer. Pitcher of beer. A it's pitcher. In, <laughs> it's insanity. That's and great. It's if, awesome. And if you can afford it, because, <laughs> because it's so stupid. It's right. $25 I just for wanted yeah. to go see Logan, though, at one of his VIP theaters. Yeah, me too. And the guy right next to me had three full 16-ounce drinks. Yeah. And he just smashed one right on the floor Yeah, well, there's Yeah, there's danger <laughs> of breaking glass. <laughs> it's... Yeah, but was it because he was angry at the movie? No, he was just drunk. Yeah, oh, it was before yeah, the yeah. movie even started. He was fucking oh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not perfect. <laughs> we haven't well. we haven't perfected it yet. <laughs> I mean, it, this is the balance between like is what's more annoying the the drunk guy or the children? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, the that's cool true. the cool thing yeah. about the VIP is that it's two seats. Mm-hmm. Per section kind That's of true. deal, you yeah. got a lot of space. There's some space, a lot of leg yeah. room. So it's like a date spot, right? It totally is. I've got it timed out now. So like, if a movie uh, that I really want to see opens up, I don't go opening weekend. The first mm-hmm. weekend is more crowded. Second weekend, so so. Third weekend, no one there. Yeah. yeah. Larry Enticer, he's known for driving this old Yamaha snowmobile off jumps. <laughs> he's got like almost a million views on this. Like, when you say old snowmobile, you mean like like an old one? Yeah, uh, I'll 70s. show you guys. And he's he wears a uh, his nickname is Denim Danger. I think. You wear a one a one piecer. Yeah, it's like all denim. He's got the Canadian tuxedo on. I'm gonna oh, show you guys. Man. <laughs> And the crazy there. thing wow. is this guy's 21 years old. There's no way that he's 21. <laughs> there was an article on Vice about him. It's pretty funny. You guys silly? I'm still going to send it. <laughs> oh. Are you serious? I'm still going to send it. Oh. Oh. Oh, man. Oh. Another day, another beer. Another day, another beer. Just gonna send it. Yeah. That mullet is Yeah, and apparently he's had that mullet for a while. It's not like it's Okay, so <laughs> hey my parents would snowmobile in the seventies. Like that was it was I love seeing this. One of my fondest childhood memories is my dad on a snowmobile. <laughs> And we were on a trail, and, and he's like, I don't know if we can cross this, but we're going to try. <laughs> and it was some, like, gigantic tree that was that was over this kind of chasm. And right. We fell. <laughs> like this, this snowmobile was, like, flipped over on top of us. And, you know. But that helmet, I've seen that helmet. I know. That helmet In the classic. 70s. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've the worn old, a helmet that's like that. old um, Evil Knievel stud helmet. Well, yeah, he's the Evil Knievel Denim Danger. Yeah. There it is. Denim, denim Danger. danger. <laughs> and just never makes the gap. Never makes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> He, it just looks painful. He kind of like he knows how to just throw it and sort of roll off the side. <laughs> Maybe. Like, yeah. He's but done it, it so I don't many know. times. <laughs> yeah. That, this is the happiest <laughs> human being alive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he does motocross as well. 
it's, of course he does. I don't know. Yeah. This you, is his niche. Wait, do you think oh, yeah, I don't know. You're thinking he's not genuine. The denim tuxedo. It's a bit too convenient. Yeah. It's it's a bit. This has yeah. become yeah. my <laughs> least favorite thing. Yeah. Yeah. We, hate, we hate this already. Most hated thing. <laughs> New segment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Cat. Thank you, Boots. Do you have any like art online or anything like a website or? I am one of those people that's like I do not want to put anything online for anyone to know about. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, if anyone wants to uh, find cat, <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. you know, stick it in your ear, you. Jackass. Uh, <laughs> boots, boots, anything? <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> I, uh, my Twitter is. Uh, at Rob Boots. There we go. Yes. I don't really tweet that much. My highlight of Twitter was I got retweeted by KFC Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> it's Beer Friday, Beer Friday. A group of animators getting together. To swap stories and see who's is better. And of course, drink some beer. Yeah, Beer Friday is finally here. What's up with the Shania? I don't know how it started. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, when she uh, when she played uh, <laughs> when she took what up residency it? in in Las Vegas, I remember reading a story about it. it's like okay, these tickets are going online for Shania <laughs> Twain in in Las Vegas, and I was like, <sighs> I looked at the dates and went, she's playing on my birthday. <laughs> that she's was playing, it. She's playing for me. She's playing for me, and I and I, no, no, I liked her before then, but I was like, I bought tickets, and I said to my wife, "We're going to Vegas," and she's like, "That sounds great." And I said, "We're going to see Shania." She's like, "Oh," <laughs> and she managed to talk. Your wife. God. She managed to talk uh, friends of ours into going to Vegas with us, only because she wanted to pass off the concert to a friend of mine. <laughs> So it was like the both of us. <laughs> but you were going to go. Oh, yeah. I was going to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously he was. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't care who was in the other seat. Right, as, right. as it turned out, it wasn't my wife. It was one of my friends. <laughs> That's fine. And we, and we were just sitting there at the concert, like two guys sitting there. And like, oh, yeah. And then <laughs> I, was, I was telling the story, like, yeah, my, my wife's, uh, you know, my wife dumped me for you. <laughs> You're and, a disappointment. <laughs> and the woman in front of me, in the very seat in front of me, was listening to our conversation. She turns around and she goes, I know what you're talking about. My, hus- <laughs> my husband didn't come either. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And then you asked her to marry you. It was the best concert. Oh, man. Ever. <laughs>